So uh, welcome to our current client webinar, kind of a retrospective on the crazy year that was 2020. And thankfully, we can move on to 2021 and start planning on everything. So uh, I'm Kyle Yunkin. I'm our Director of Customer Success here at Gallus Golf. You'll also see on your screen Matt Caden. He's the Senior Customer Success Manager on our team as well. We're going to be taking you through a couple different parts of uh, Dallas Golf, just to kind of give you an idea of what we have been working on the past couple of months, and also give you a little bit of a peek at the future along with um, some other points. So here, with that being said, let's start taking a look here. Um, the agenda for today is we're gonna take a look at a number of things, you can see it right here. Um, we're gonna start off taking a look at some notable stats from the past year. And then we're gonna move into some of the new features that we added, along with um, kind of a little bit of a sneak preview, some of the stuff that we're planning on adding in 2021. Uh, then we will be looking at some things that you should be setting up in your app right now um, while things are kind of mellow, because we know, all know that it's gonna get crazy in a couple of months here. Um, and then we're gonna take a look at some of the support resources for 2021 as well. Um, with that being said, let's get it going, shall we? So first off, let's take a look at some of the notable stats from 2020. Just to give you guys an idea, um, 2020 was a year unlike any other in mobile app engagement, um, just because obviously of the ongoing global pandemic and all of that um, going on. Our app saw a notable increase in a number of areas. Um, and we, it was a pleasure for us to sit back and watch our customers see all the different creative ways that they use their app to make it work for their facility. And we all had to be pretty flexible last year. Um, and we came out of it stronger and we learned a lot, I know, here at Gallus, and we're ready to uh, take some of that knowledge into next year. So just want to go over some notable increases that we saw year over year from 2019 into 2020. So one of the first, we saw a lot of push notifications going out from the different apps, just because obviously people needed to get some communications out, some facility procedural changes, things like that. And also just filling up the T-sheet to get while the getting's good, right? So um, we saw a 20.4% increase year over year in the number of push notifications that were sent per app on average. Um, which is a large increase. Normally, it's more in the range of like four or five percent, something like that. So, uh, four times what we normally see. Another thing that we saw a huge increase in was actually tournaments ran through our Gallus Tournament Wizard software. We saw a 23 percent increase on average per app in the number of tournaments ran. Way more impressive when you think about the fact that a lot of facilities did not have the ability to actually run tournaments. So most of these were for like leagues and outings and things of that nature. Um, so it was great for us to see that. Um, we know that basically taking away a lot of the paper scorecards took away some of the touch points. People were using their apps a lot more for that. One of the last things that we saw an increase in um, well, we saw an increase in a lot of stuff, but one of the main things that we saw an increase in was the average app download growth. Um, so going off of that with, you know, taking away paper scorecards, maybe um, having some of the procedures just housed within the apps directly, we saw a huge jump in the average app download growth. So in 2019, our average app download growth was somewhere around 511 downloads. Um, this past year, it was 703.9 was the average. That's a 38% jump year over year, which is stellar. And we're very excited about that. You know, speaking of average app download growth, I wanted to give you guys an idea of some of our highest performers and um, some of the people that uh, we've really seen just go leaps and bounds over the past year with their download growth. We actually split it into two different categories. We have our MCO apps that have a lot of different facilities all housed within one app. And then we also have our individual course apps, which are basically, you know, there's maybe one facility or two or three, something like that. So first, let's take a look at our MCO apps 
who had the highest growth in 2020. We are a San Diego based company, so we are very happy to see the city of San Diego um, as the top one. They had a little over 17,000 additional downloads in the year of 2020. Um, a lot of these are municipalities you'll notice, things like City of Denver, Play Golf Calgary, our friends up north, um, Forest Preserve, MCG, um, and Van Golf as well. Um, we also saw like West Coast Golf Group, City of LA, City of Calgary, and Morris County as well. So if you are an MCO app, um, these are some numbers that you can shoot for this year to try and get some download growth. Maybe try to uh, unthrown City of San Diego, and we'll be talking about you next year on this slide. Um, by the same token, we can take a look at some of our individual course apps and see who is the highest performing. Our highest performing one was Pleasant View Golf Course in Wisconsin. They had almost 8,000 new downloads, um, but also some honorable mentions, Kananaskis, Silverhorn in Texas, Palmetto Dunes, which is a resort course on the East Coast, um, Musket Ridge, Redwoods, Fox Hollow, Sincadia, Castleberry, and Troy Golf as well. Um, so those are just, once again, some numbers that you can take a look at. Um, these are the top of the top. And also, if you're looking for some ideas on how to use your app and um, what's the best way to utilize some of our features that we're offering, these are some great apps to download and take a look at them. So um, you might want to maybe do that. So with all that being said, let's start talking about some of the features that we introduced in 2020, the year of playing it by ear. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but you'll notice in this webinar that there's a Q&A box on the left-hand side of the screen. If you come up with any questions or anything like that, um, we would be happy to be answering them throughout the webinar. And we're also gonna take some time at the end if we still have some time left to uh, answer any of those that you may have as well. So be sure to do that. So anyway, getting back to new features from 2020. So 2020, we had a roadmap of things that we wanted to do. And then all of a sudden, this little thing called the coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic came in. And we had to, uh, change on the fly as we often do and introduce some features that were very, very suited to the age that the world was in. So one of the main things or the first things actually that we changed was the offer locker process. Um, we made it into a more contactless experience for the customers. It's housed directly on the customer's phone and it does not require the staff to touch the phone or do anything of that nature um, you can also as always you can go into your back-end dashboard keep track of redemptions um, we saw some great uses of this offer locker we're actually going to go over that a little bit later on in the webinar but uh stay tuned for that part you can also you'll notice on all these slides there's a more information here link at the bottom. Um, you can access those links by clicking on that um, link that Matt shared at the beginning of the webinar in the Q&A box. Um, that has all of these slides on it. You'll be able to get to our knowledge base and get some tutorial videos on those. The next thing that we introduced was the contactless loyalty program. Much in the same vein as a uh, offer locker was, we originally had a loyalty program that was very dependent on the staff member touching the customer's phone and entering in a confirmation code in order to uh, authorize basically someone earning or redeeming points or punches. Um, we made a pivot on that and we came up with a fantastic process that a lot of courses are really loving it. Um, it's actually improved it and made it um, a little less burdensome on their pro shop staffs, which is some feedback that we had been getting the past couple of years that we needed to uh, maybe make a couple adjustments there. So um, part of this was adding the new staff loyalty portal, which is a place that the staff members can go on their own device or maybe the point of sale computer at the pro shop or whatever other place. Maybe, the, maybe it's the restaurant, maybe it's um, the dining room, something like that. Um, 
basically they can go in there, they generate a three digit code, and then they tell it to the customer for the customer to enter it in on their own device. Um, this has made it so that we still have the authorization steps so that people can't just go in there and add their own stuff, but it's also um, really great because it, once again, allows for that transfer without having to actually be touching uh, the user's device. So um, a couple other things that we did add over the past year, um, one of them was the enhanced pop-ups feature. So we've always had pop-ups in the app. They're basically in-app messages that you can use to um, tell users about whatever you want. You can tell them on after hole eight that they need to take a look at your menu and place their order ahead of the turn. You can give them pop-ups throughout the round of golf to show them um, you know, maybe you have a deal on memberships or some sort of a sale going on in the pro shop, or even maybe it's just a survey that you want to pop in at the end of the round so that you can get an idea of how customers are thinking your course is set up and all that good stuff. Um, we added a new design for them to make them a little more visually pleasing in the user's app. We also added some nifty tics, tips and tricks that you can do kind of in the back end as well. So um, one of these is the app open pop-up. This is one of the places that we are expecting to see a lot of growth um, from all of you in this upcoming year. Um, this app open pop-up allows you to put a message that's going to appear to any user that opens your app before they can see the home screen. It's a really great spot to put any announcements, upcoming events, just whatever you wanna get in front of the user before they get to wherever they're gonna go in your guys' app. Um, so that's one thing that you can do, but you can also have a couple other different um, kind of bells and whistles to it. One of them is the do not show this message again. Um, that it will put a little box at the bottom of the pop-up so users can say, I don't wanna see this message after um, this one time, and then they're not gonna be bothered with that anymore. It works really great for like upcoming events and things of that nature because you don't wanna kind of be showing them the same thing all the time. Um, another one that you can do for the app open pop-up is you can basically say only show it this every X number of times, basically. So um, say a user opens the app, they see the pop-up, you can say um, only show it to them once every five times that they open the app so that they kind of get reminded, but they're not constantly seeing the message too. These are all things that we're trying to do to make the user experience a more positive, more informational, and just, I mean, all around more pleasing to them as they're opening the app. So we're really proud of it. We're excited to see what you all use it for in this upcoming year as well. One of the next things that we introduced was the featured news section redesign. Um, this is a redesigned experience in your admin dashboard um, with a couple, once again, bells and whistles that you can go in there to maybe make it a more personalized experience for the user. Um, one of the biggest changes to this is previously when you created a news item, you could not put an end date on it. So if you put a news item in for an event that's coming up two weeks from now, you had to remember to go back in and delete it, that it wasn't kind of like an old piece of news that didn't apply to the users anymore. We've now added a specific time window setting in there so that it'll disappear after a specific date. This is a, once again, like the app, app open pop-up, it's a really great spot to put anything that's coming up. We've also seen people use it for like course conditions updates, things of that nature as well. It's that box that appears at the top of your home screen. Um, if you uh, have your app open right now, you'll probably see one in there right now. Um, another thing that we added in was HTML link support. So you've always been able to put URLs into news items. You can basically pop it right into the body text of the news item. But um, what some of the feedback that we got from a few of you was that it wasn't the cleanest experience because you don't wanna see a big old long URL that you have to click on to get to another spot. Um, so we added the ability to add in an HTML link. So instead of a big long URL, it could be something as simple as click here to register now, or something of that nature. Um, so that's one thing we have more information in that link that's on the slideshow, 
<clears throat> deck, but let us know if you want want to go over that in detail. Moving on here. This is one thing that I know a lot of you are praising the Lord right now as you're seeing this. Um, we added score posting. Well, rather, we actually improved it. We've always had score posting, um, but this past year with a lot of the world handicap changes, we had to make a couple edits and pivots midstream to make sure that it was all up to date and it had all the features that the new world handicap system has to offer. Um, we are happy, <coughs> excuse me, to announce that as of January 1st, your app, as long as you are a Gen member course, Golf Canada or Golf Net, you should have it in your app already. So when users go in to the scorecard and GPS, keep score, at the end of the round, they'll be prompted to uh, basically say whether they would like to post their score or not. So some of the improvements that we have had added to this include whole by whole scores instead of aggregate scores at the end of the round, which is up to um, basically the specs that we've been given by the USGA, Golf Canada, and Golf Net. Um, they can also designate their round type. So whether it's home, away, tournament, all that stuff, they can do it directly through the app. They can also designate whether it's a front or back nine round or an 18 hole as well. So if you have any questions on that, or maybe it's not um, working properly in your app, you can always just email support at gallusgolf.com. We would be happy to help you out with that. We're very excited to get that going. We know that's gonna help out a lot of you. So after going through some of the stuff that happened this past year, you're probably wondering, what are we working on for 2021? Let me go through a couple things just in general that we're going to be working on. Um, we're going to have webinars on all of these new features as the year progresses. So be on the lookout for those. Um, we'll be going over those in a lot more detail than I'm going to give right now. But one of the big things is mobile check-in. Mobile check-in last year was a great success. Um, and many of you know that we have an existing integration with Club Profit Systems, our great partners. Um, we learned a lot from me last year, a lot of feedback on what can be enhanced in it, maybe what can be changed around, and what new features you're looking for as well. Things like adding carts um, during the check-in process and um, better ways to basically get additional um, golfers in there, checked in, paid, and out on your course, um, having a good time as well. So we're looking to um, basically introduce some new features very, very soon, quote unquote. Um, we're looking to hopefully get a lot of things introduced. Um, we're planning before the season begins. So be on the lookout for some of those updates. Another thing that we are looking to enhance is the offer locker. We've already talked a little bit about offer locker, but there's a lot of things that we know can be improved and we can make them a little better, a little easier for you to run. Um, so some of the things that we're looking to add are things like adding multiple redemptions into an individual offer. So things like if you wanted to give them maybe like three free rounds or you know three free carts or something like that, you wouldn't have to now, um, once we get this finished, you wouldn't have to add three separate offers. You'll be able to create one and then associate it with a specific email address for that particular user. So um, one of the other things we're very excited about is we're working on direct e-com integration with a couple of different partners. One of them, one-to-one -one marketing. We have that actually out in beta right now. So if you're interested in looking into that, definitely email us at support at We can get going on that. But we have a couple other e-com partners that we're working with too. So stay tuned on that. Basically, we're gonna let people go in, purchase something, and then it will automatically generate offers in your offer locker. It's going to be very cool and it's going to be very, um, very nice for you. You're not going to have to go into the back end and be doing all this admin work. Um, one of the other things that I know I personally am very excited about is we are working on getting you guys accessible app data and analytics. 
So many of you know that you can go into the admin dashboard of your app and you can take a look at like how many downloads you have, how many people have opted into push notifications, things of that nature. Um, we want to give you access to everything. Like when you are wondering how your offer locker is doing or how maybe how your tournaments are going or how many people have even posted their score from your app, we want you to be able to access all of that without having to go to a million different websites and have all of that. So I know many of you are saying hallelujah right now. Um, so we are working on that right now. We actually have it out in beta for all of our Dallas admins. So we're hoping to get that out to you guys in the coming months. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be, gonna be a much better experience for you as an app admin. Um, another thing that we are working on is prepaid value cards. So things like, um, you know, maybe someone, you want to allow users the ability to come in and uh, basically load up their card and then be able to directly through the app show a QR code and have it be scanned into your point of sale system so that they can uh, pay for their round. We are working on that right now. Um, it's going to be fully mobile, fully contactless, and it's going to work in tandem with your point of sale. We're very excited about it. Um, it's going to it's going to be great. So keep an eye out for that too. Um, lastly, just in general, um, if you're digging this webinar right now, or you maybe want to learn some more about your app, we are planning on doing a pro tips webinar series throughout the year. So we're going to be doing deep dives on all the sections of the app. Um, many of you have done kind of like app review calls with either me or Matt, or maybe someone else on our team. Um, and we try to tailor them to each of you, depending on what you are trying to use the app for. Since there are so many features in the app, you know, a lot of times people will maybe just pick one or two that they want to really be good at. Um, but then the thing with that is after that year, that you've been using those one and two, um, having, having a great time with it. You don't, a lot of people don't take the time to maybe take that next step and look at something else in the app that they can also utilize. So we wanna help you with that. We have a lot of great tips and a lot of great ideas, and we wanna do some deep dive webinars for you. So be on the lookout for that. Um, it's going to be a good time, and we're going to get you, make sure that you're using your app to its full potential. Um, so speaking of which, um, our next section in the webinar is what you should be setting up in your app right now. Um, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk at this point, so good news. I'm going to turn it over to Matt, um, and he's going to walk you through some of the things that we think are going to be um really useful to you for this upcoming year so matt take it away well hello everybody thanks kyle um yes so this is going to be my opportunity to kind of tell you for most of you out there uh you know being kind of more of a slow season uh as opposed to maybe some people in the Sun Belt states um this is the best time to kind of do some of these things that we're going to be uh, things you maybe only have to do once and set up now that will help you later in the year or next year when you're looking at different stuff uh, within your app itself. Um, so, Kyle, if you want to move on to the next slide for me. Perfect. So the first thing is tracking tea time revenue. Um, one thing that you can do uh, is, is possibly do, everybody has different POS, so all the POSs are and booking engines are slightly different, but uh, most of them have the ability to track where your tea times are coming from, whether it's your website, you know, directly from a computer, whether it's from a mobile phone, from an app, social media referral or email, or even a tea time aggregator like, you know, the big, you know, Golf Now or Teon. So we can basically uh, help you communicate with your specific uh, booking engine and get a what we call a specific booking URL that is only in the app. And they can then use that to track all of the traffic um, coming to your uh, booking engine that's only from the app. And that's a great kind of tool to use, especially, you know, year to year to look at, okay, where did we have the most growth? Was it all, you know, if was it people calling in to book times? Was it more you know, people booking on a computer, was it a mobile phone? But now you can also have your app as one of those. 
So this is the best time to do it. It takes just typically one email to your provider. I can even do that for you. Um, basically, I've been doing that quite a bit this off season with people, uh, you know, emailing them, copying you on the email, getting that new link and putting it into the app for you. So this is just a great one-time thing you can do um, to help track, you know, where this revenue is coming from and, and make sure, you know, to, you know, make sure that the money you're spending on not only your app, but other other uh, avenues for marketing are working for you. So that is one of the, you know, things that's a one-time thing now that can really help you throughout the year. And especially next year when you're looking at the data um, for what your marketing dollars are going towards. So, all right. And now the next thing that we're going to talk about is how you're going to promote your app and to get more people to download it. This is one thing we get a lot of questions of is, hey, we have, I only have so many downloads. How do I get on that list that Kyle showed me at the beginning of, you know, being the top, you know, one in your as company? How do you get more downloads? And a lot of it is really uh, stuff, again, that you can kind of set up and do ahead of time and just kind of make sure that it's just done and ready for this next, you know, big season coming up. And one of the best things you can do is put a website on your website, a download link to download your app, or just to let people know you have an app. Um, this is something that in the dashboard of your app, there is a promote app section that has a smart link that allows you to have a link basically to go directly to the app store if you're using a mobile phone to the right store for you. Or it will go to a website if you're using a computer to pick either the app store with Apple or the Google Play Store. This is a great tool. You can put it next to your book uh, tea time on your website. You can put it at the bottom next to your social media uh, you know, links, or you can put a big banner right in the middle or right at the top or bottom of your page. This is a great tool. You can put it there and you know, the more places you have it, the better. Another great place to put one of these smart links is the bottom of your email uh, promo. They're sending out an email blast at the beginning of the season to remind people you have it. Um, putting it in your signature of your email whenever you're sending in emails to anybody. Uh, booking confirmation emails is a huge one. When they're booking a tea time, remind them, hey, we have an app and you can mobile score this way. And next time, book your app through uh, book your tea time through the app. Um, but then uh, some simple stuff is print materials. We have all uh, in that promote app section, also an area that you can print out uh, print materials. It has uh, your app um, and it also has a QR code that people can scan with their mobile phone. And basically it'll pull up the app store for them as well. That is a great tool so that you can just put those all around. We have ones for cart signs, ones for tents to put anywhere in your golf shop. Um, that's just, you know, things that we do for you that's already there. You can print out on your own and place around. But then, you know, think about social media campaign, um, having monthly drawings or tournament series in your app as well. But also just using your staff to be like, hey, we have an app. Do you know that you can, you know, live score with it? Uh, you can put in your scores. You can post your score at the end of the round. Um, you know, things like that to help your staff just kind of even just mention it. Have it. If you have some print material there, they can point to it when they're coming to check in. Um, you know, it's just another thing that, again, you can do kind of print all this stuff out now and have it ready and, and place it around your course uh, when it gets busy just so people know about it. But again, just just to let people even know you have it uh, is a big thing. And then doing email blasts beforehand is probably the number one thing um, besides putting on your website that I would do right before the season as well. So um, that's basically promoting your app that way. Um, another thing is getting... Kyle talked about pop-ups and it's great that we've enhanced pop-ups. And one of the things you can do now is pop-ups. A lot of times you can put them in there and kind of set them and forget them. But the other great thing that he, uh, Kyle did even mention, he, he mentioned uh, slightly is that the pop-ups also now have an expiration date as well, which is nice. You can basically set up a pop-up to be ready to pop up at any time in the future and then also expire at any time as well. And you can place them any part of the app, whether it's on the app open or in the different uh, courses, you know, between each hole or at the beginning of the round or the end of the round. So this is a, a great time to kind of go in and make sure they look good, make sure they're up to date, uh, make sure they're not, you know, don't have the wrong menu in there. You don't have the wrong uh, phone number for your uh, turn menu as well. Um, but also just all your stuff is current. It doesn't say, you know, 2019 membership information. It says 2021. Just little things like that 
but adding pop up, you know, anywhere from three to five per round is is pretty good. Um, you don't want to annoy your your golfers having one every single hole. Uh, but it's a nice, the best one that you can focus on. Um, you know, if you're going to be focused on one that you're going to change on a regular basis, would be that app open one. That's going to be the one that people see the most. Uh, people, when they click on your app, they have to see this. Um, it's something that they, you know, they can't necessarily opt out of like some other parts of the app. Um, so they will have to see this either by clicking that big X in the corner or clicking on the button to learn more. So it is a great tool to use that app open one, but using other ones throughout the app as well is definitely going to help. Um, there's some ones in here. And if you have any specific questions, obviously, um, you know, do it to what your people, your golfers are going to want to see um, and tailor towards them. So, uh, but the pop-ups in general is something, again, set them up now, get them ready and have them go out. So that way, at least they're already in there for the season. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, so now the, uh, another one is to schedule in some offers in your offer locker. And again, you can set these up ahead of time and have them go out throughout the year. So this is something while it's slow now, you can set up different offers throughout different months and, and change them up every month and just already have them set either for just that one month or good for until they ex, you know expire um, at any time in the future. But one of the greatest things I've seen some clubs do, and maybe some of you guys on this call have done before, and it seems to work really well, um, just getting a lot of uh, repeat redemptions and people using the app in general, is maybe setting up a few uh, offers that you have every single month. Maybe it's a free bucket of balls, you know, a free drink with entree, something really that doesn't cost a whole lot. Um, but essentially you can basically set in the app ahead of time to start, you know, February 1st and it expires February 28th. You have the same two to three offers every single month. It trains your, your members or your golfers to learn that, you're going to have one new content every single month in the offer locker. And it gets them to usually at the end of the month, come in and be like, Hey, this is, if I don't use this, I'm going to lose it. So I'm going to come at the end of the month and use this 5% off in the pro shop. Make sure I spend this now because I want to use it again next month. So you, you, you'll see a lot of people redeeming these kind of towards the end of the month a lot, um, knowing that the new one will be there. Uh, but it also gets them just kind of trained and knowing that there's stuff in there. And that's when you can add individual other offers, maybe for just, one month in particular, one week or so for some event that then, you know, adds other things and they will see, oh, wow, now this, I got Pro V1, you know, on sale that I have an offer in my offer locker for. Something like that, that then since they're already looking at it, they're going to see it more likely to see it and redeem those offers. So again, being more consistent in the app is helpful. And a lot of that stuff is now you can do ahead of time and plan out you know, months in advance and are set up in your app and just have it go without you having to do it on a month to month basis. It frees you up your time wise, um, but it's a good bang for your buck to do it now while it's slow. And you can kind of think about what you're going to do and just kind of place them and, and forget about them kind of thing. So um, that's kind of one of the best things for the offer. Log. Another one, just real quick to talk about a lot of clubs have started doing, you know, discounts, uh, you know, are not something not everybody needs to do because it, golf is so busy using the offer locker for other things other than uh you know money off it could be something like recognition it could be uh some clubs i know are doing i've seen one the other day for uh you know clubs that are always sold out on bookings they can't you know their tea times are booked way in advance uh you know an offer to every new person that they if they come into the clubhouse and book a tea time with them they can book two days in advance of anybody else to try to get them, you know, ability to come and play. If they have trouble booking a time that they, they want to play on Saturday at 10 AM, that's the only time they can play, you know, let them come in two days early. It gets them into the shop to hopefully spend some money, but it also gives them that, Hey, I can actually pick what time I want. And, you know, it's ahead of everybody else. So you can do that targeted to just specific people, maybe your top, you know, members or other people like that, but it's a great way to use it for other things other than just straight discounts. So um, just, just think about it outside the box. We've had a lot of outside the box thinking this last year. So that's uh, one of those things we can do there. So uh, Kyle, if you want to move on to the next one for me, thank you. Uh, I'm now going to talk about uh, not just things that you can set up in the app now, but I'm um, talking about some of the other uh, parts of the app that you may or may not know about. Not everybody has this as part of their app bundle. Um, so this is uh, the tournament software options that we have in the app itself. 
GTW is what we call our Gallus Tournament Wizard. That is something that we have built. Um, and it basically has the ability to anybody that doesn't know about it, I can definitely do more information. We can do a whole webinar just on this. So I'm just going to touch on the basics right now. Essentially, it's got uh, the biggest thing is that you can have mobile live scoring right in your app. It's got very easy to set up. Um, it's got just simple play to, uh, uh, games that you set up in the app for it. Um, it does come with an online registration where it can create a full website where you can actually accept payments or not, depending on how you want to do it, right? Uh, when the people are registering and you can register for you know the whole team or just individuals right there. It does have all the print materials you're going to need for the day of cart signs, bag tags, check-in sheets, scorecards with dots on them. You know, every little thing you can think of, um, you know, whole printouts uh, for like longest drive competitions, that kind of stuff. Uh, another thing it does have a host link. So if you're going to host an event at your club, instead of having, uh, you know, you have to do everything, you can basically assign a host access to just that one tournament or outing to anybody you want. You send them that link and they can control the uh, event, set up all the things for them, or you can also help them. The biggest thing, though, is they can set up their own online registration and collect all the payment themselves without you having to do it yourself. It's a, it's really nice where they can cut you a single check and they have to worry about collecting payment and you don't have to touch the money at all. Um, it also has TV leaderboards um, that you can put on your pro shop if you have a smart TV that has one of those scrolling uh, you know, leaderboards, plus the leaderboard on your phone. You can also have hole and T sponsors, which we didn't really talk about in pop-ups. That's another great tool to use pop-ups for, for tournaments. We Now that you can set the date, uh, the end date, you can set them up just for tournaments. You can have hole sponsors for every single hole sponsor. Make them, you know, that way you don't have to remember to turn them off at the end of the tournament. They're just only good for that one day, which makes it nice. Uh, plus, it has score management. It has all your uh, scores right there at the end of the round. If people don't uh, put in their scores, you can manually put them in. And what's nice is one person per, per pairing per group can score for the whole group. So if not everybody wants to use their phone to score, you have some people that maybe lost their phone or have a flip phone or their phone died, one person per group. Uh, can score everybody if they want, or they can all score individually. So that's some of the advantages there. If you want to know more, reach out to me. I'm going to put a link at the end of the uh, of this that has a way to book a uh, time with me for anything, whether it's an app review, a uh, if you want to do a demo on this tournament, or about the next couple of stuff we're going to talk about. Anything you want to talk about, schedule a meeting. It books it automatically on my calendar, and it and blocks it off uh, for you. So some of the other exciting things we have. Um, we are it fully integrated with Golf Genius Premium and another uh, Vision Perfect, which is also known as Viper. Um, essentially, if you want some more uh, play types, uh, you more scoring formats for your for your outings. If you want to have league aggregate league scoring, these two other uh, uh, softwares are great out there. They they have a lot of great features in them. Um, you can always do a demo with them individually as well. But essentially, the greatest thing is that we are integrated with them. So instead of having to use their app and download their app for all the live scoring, you can still use your app. So it's your, your, your golfers. You can, you have their information. They have to download your app and not somebody else's other third party app. So you get a lot more people to download it, but essentially all of the, all of the, uh, actual information is set up all in their uh, software and you don't have to touch it in our software so you don't have to do it twice essentially all they do is live score using your app and it goes right back to dumps all the information back into the software so it can give you all the aggregate scoring set up a custom league website for them um, all that kind of stuff so if you want to know more about those two if you have those already if you have either viper or golf genius premium or want to look into it um, you know let us know and we can help set that up for you as well So now the next thing we're going to talk about is we do have a another uh, feature that is not built into the app itself, but if you want to add it in, we can talk about that. It's called ONTAP. It's our food and beverage messaging uh, system, where essentially you can have a, a menu built into the app that you can... Uh, with a few clicks, easily send your order directly to uh, the you know either the restaurant or whoever's making up the food at the turn menu uh, at the turn restaurant. Uh, but essentially, it's a way to uh, 
to collect those orders. They can already be paid for. We have a couple different cloud processors you can attach to it. Uh, or you can just take the pay, take the order and have them pay when they get there through your normal POS. We see more clubs doing that as well, just to make it easy so you don't have to pick up the phone and have somebody take that order down. It automatically gets sent to you um, a number of different ways. What's nice is there's a number of different ways to receive the order. We have an iPad app. You can receive a text message or an email. Um, there's a couple different ways that we can, depending on your situation, how you guys run your uh, food and beverage, we can help kind of find a way that works for you. Uh, but you can also set up pickup or delivery. Uh, you have your choice. You can put in your own times when it's available. Um, you can basically add the menu to your scorecard in GPS. So you, when you have a pop-up, it goes directly there and they can order it right there, charge it to their phone. And then boom, it's once they log in once, they save their information in their card. So they don't have to log in multiple times encourages people to hopefully use it over and over again. So this is a very, very complicated. And we can, I, again, do a whole uh, uh, webinar just on this. So if you want to know, I can do, I do demos on this. Usually it's a, uh, you know, 30 to 45 minute just to go through the specifics of how this works. I show you the front end of how it looks to the user, how it looks for your customer actually ordering. And then I show you how you receive the order and then how you control it and can easily update the menu and the back end. So that is our on tap system there and one of the last things i'm going to talk about is our boost marketing uh boost is our own internal marketing team for you if you if you all this stuff we just told you about we there's a whole lot of stuff in the app and you're like matt i'm already too busy i don't even use the app enough for you know what what i want to use it for and it's you know i'm too busy for the you know less than the cost of a part-time intern um you can essentially hire us to run all of your social media, your email marketing, and your app, all your app functions as well. This is something great that we do uh, for a number of clubs already. Um, you can also get referrals from some of the clubs that we already are using it for, but essentially you get our team to run all of your uh, functions for all of all your marketing. And we tie it all together, make it all nice. It's essentially, we meet with you once once a month for about an hour to go through what you wanna do for the month. Um, we can do it once a week if you want. It kind of depends on your time. So it take, frees you up to, you know, basically allow us to help you with that. So if you wanna learn more about that, you know, reach out to us and we can definitely get you in touch with our team that does that, so. And I believe that is, it for all the main things we're going to do now here are some resources to help you out in 2021 so not only are kyle and myself available and the rest of our team this is the easiest way to contact us if you need help um obviously reach out via you know calling is easy but um this is uh we have a brand new what we call community um, section. It's kind of like a forum on our website where essentially all of our frequently asked questions will be. Uh, the easiest way to find, if you have a question about, wait, how do I do this? Most people, what they do, they type into Google. You can do that now. You can say, hey, how do I send a push notification, you know, Gallus? And hopefully this will pop up with all you know, an answer somebody already answered for you. If not, what's nice is all you have to do, it takes about 15 seconds to create a profile. You put in your name and your email address and you ask the question and either one of us will answer that for you or hopefully one of you guys out there on this uh, on this call will also be helpful and help, you know, your other fellow, uh, you know, operators out there to answer some of these questions as well. So this will also lead to other discussions if people want to post just generic questions like what are people doing for this or what are you putting in your offer locker? We want it to be a community for you guys so that you guys can actually interact with each other, ask questions. You know, a lot of you guys might not be in the same territory, so hopefully you're not, uh, you know, worried about sharing, you know, trade secrets with each other. You can help each other out. Um, you know, we love doing this. This happens, you know, when we used to get together at the PGA show and other places when we used to be able to get together. Um, this was always the best part is seeing people come together, share ideas and get some great ideas for the next season. Um, now that, you know, we're not doing that this year, we wanted to come up with a way to do that. So this is hopefully going to take off, but it's going to take your guys' help to do that. So a lot of what we're going to be doing is, you know, we have some questions, you know, obviously the FAQs are big. And if you just want to know a question, but, you know, posting other things and, and getting help from each other is what we see this going hopefully in the future. So, um, but this is a great way to do that there. So all you have to do is sign up with your email address and, you know, it takes 10 seconds to do that. 
But another way to get in, uh, in touch with us, if you need help, um, we, you always have the support.gallusgolf.com. That's where our knowledge base is. We've spent a lot of time this last year updating that to make sure it's up to date with the great, all the, all the new features that we've added, how to do everything. It's got, you know, pictures, where to click, how to do everything. Plus it's got videos at the bottom of almost every page to show you if you need to, to walk through it um, as well. You can always email support at gallusgolf.com. Our phone number is right there. We have a chat that you can get to on any page of our website. Uh, the manager login, there's the help desk. It's basically right there. All the question marks, the little help in the upper corner is there available for each individual section. Plus there's videos right there. Also at the bottom right there, if you want to know more or, or schedule time to go over things individually, my that little link at the bottom right there, it says click here to schedule a demo or a call with Matt. That goes again directly to my uh, my calendar and it books a time for you um, to talk about whatever you want. So that's what we are here for you um, as a team, but also uh, you know you can reach us any ways you want. Basically, you can even text uh, you know my my cell phone number as well. That's some people that's the only way they have time to do it. So, uh, but these are up there for you guys for us to help you. We're we're here for you. We want you to use us. So. So that is uh, pretty much it. Kyle, do you have, uh, yeah. you want to start with yeah, the q thanks. thanks, Matt. Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll reiterate what Matt was just saying. Um, you know, here at Gallus, we take pride in having the best golf or customer service department in all of golf. So really what we're trying to do here, we hope that you guys see it. We're trying to meet you at whatever way that you want to reach out to us so if phone is best for you we are happy to talk to you on the phone if you want to do it through email that's great too there's chat all over the place in every single page of the admin dashboard um basically anything short of a carrier pigeon we will uh, <laughs> we'll answer your question so in fact fax um, is out too now but yeah yeah don't have fax, yeah that's true <laughs> that's true no more facts um so yeah so yeah i mean Whichever way you guys want to reach out to us, feel free to use any of those methods in order to do so. Um, with that being said, you know we can go over some of the Q and A. Uh, there was a little bit of action in the Q and A section throughout the webinar. Just wanted to review some of the questions that got asked. So Paul Wick was asking um, if you're allowed to do whole sponsors on regular rounds and not tournaments. You absolutely can. We see people do it all the time. Um, a lot of people use it to actually offset the cost of their mobile app. They sell ads to local businesses to show up on specific holes. Um, the local business gets something out of it, obviously, because they're advertising to your app's users and you're getting something out of it because it's taking more money and putting it back into your hands to be able to use it in different spots as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, That's a great question, though, Paul. Good question. Yes, definitely. Um, another thing was uh, Bill was Bill Johnson was asking if this episode is going to be available for review. Um, absolutely, we're going to be shooting out a recording of this later today so that you'll be able to um, check it out. Um, if you really liked it that much and you want to watch it a second time, <laughs> just like hearing from me and Matt, oh yeah, definitely do that. Yeah. Or even better, I forward it along to someone. Else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love listening yeah. to myself talk, so I'm gonna watch this multiple times. No, I'm not. I hate I hate listening to myself talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um and then Gord was asking if you're able to use the tournament app for lead play or if it's more designed for single day events. Our tournament software is more designed for single day events. Um but we do have a lot of courses that use it for league play. Um, not so much for the season long scoring, but for that actual day, just to be able to keep score, get all of their aggregates. And there are spreadsheet exports so that you can get the numbers and keep them in a master spreadsheet. If you're looking for a more robust league scoring um, system, that's why we're integrated with Golf Genius and Vision Perfect, because they have fantastic ones. And it allows you to leverage their system because that's what they do best. And also leverage your Gallus app so that people can still keep live score um, through their app and have that really great experience while they're at the club. So really just depends on your situation, to be honest. Um, we'd be happy to talk it over to you. 
Now we email us at support at gallusgolf.com I, I, for that one. Kyle, I will add, uh, absolutely, there is, you know, uh, we are definitely designed more for single, but there are people out there using for league play, like Kyle said, and there's there's kind of different, two different ways. We also have a, just a generic leaderboard that you can use for live uh, scoring as well. Um, I've been I've been setting this up and helping people with this the last uh, couple months, getting this ready for next year. So um, that's definitely something I can I can talk to you about if you want to see if it'll work for you. Um, if, if you if you have a very simple league or something that's pretty basic, so absolutely, yeah. And then uh, Dave Callen was asking what options are available in pop ups in conjunction to all the whole sponsors. So pop ups are basically you kind of get the framework of it and you can design them to be however you like. So some of the things that you can toggle in the pop-up section are like the picture, obviously, that's displaying on the pop-up, but also the text that's in there, the title, and then you can also have an outbound link wherever you want to go. Um, so most of the time, if there's like a whole sponsor, you're probably taking them to their website or even better, a landing page where maybe the user can give some information for that local business to get a lead out of it. Um, and then as we mentioned, you can choose basically where it's triggering. So whether that's on app open when they actually open the app or in between a specific hole during the round. So technically, I mean, as Matt was saying earlier, technically you could have, I guess, throughout the round, you could have 19 pop-ups because you can have one after every hole plus one at the start of the round as well. 20, Most people yeah, don't 20. do that. Yes. But it's, yeah. yeah, that's a little overkill. I would say uh, the, one of the nice things about pop-ups too that not a lot of people know is you can set up one pop-up to, um, if you have multiple courses or you have, you know, multiple layouts, you have a front nine and a back nine in your app, um, you, can you can have the same pop-up triggered in multiple different courses, quote unquote, in different time periods. So you can kind of have, you know, you, you don't have to create the pop-ups more than once, which is nice. And you can also turn them off um, I've seen some clubs use like a, at the beginning of a round, you know, if they're cart path only for that day, they have one that's saved as cart path only. It's, it's saved with no trigger. And all you have to do is turn on, you know, have it be triggered on when you start the round, the days that you want it. So, I mean, there's a lot of different options for those. It's very customizable. Um, and again, we can probably do a deep dive just on pop-ups um, one of these days. I'm sure that's one of the first ones we're going to do. So. We definitely will. We definitely will. Yeah. Well, it looks like that's about the end of our Q&A, but the conversation doesn't have to stop here. Um, if you guys need some help or you want to talk about your app specifically, we are happy to help you. So shoot us a line at support at gallusgolf.com. Um, be on the lookout for all those webinars. And thank you all so much for your time and your business. Um, Matt threw in his uh, link to schedule a meeting as well at the bottom. We really appreciate all that you guys are using our app for, and it's a pleasure to work with you all. So thanks so much for your time. Hope you have a Thank great you rest of your day. We'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, everybody.